Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Today we are going to discuss two more probability sampling techniques. That is multi-stage sampling and multi-phase sampling. Often while conducting any research or study, we follow these two types of techniques. So it is the ideal time that we learned about multi-stage sampling and multi-phase sampling. First, we shall start with multi-stage sampling. It is done at multiple stages as the name suggests. First, we start with bigger sampling units from which we collect our samples and from these bigger sampling units, in subsequent stages, we find the smaller units. So that is why this is multi-stage sampling. There are sampling units of various sizes. So we start with bigger units and then we follow in subsequent stages and the sampling units become smaller. It is most commonly done to conduct large scale studies, for example, national level surveys, and it reduces the workload of the researcher. In multi-stage sampling, the whole population is first divided into first stage sampling unit, from which we randomly select the samples. Now, after selecting the first stage, then we go into the second stage units from which another sample is selected. And this is continued in subsequent stages. So we can have our third stage sampling and fourth stage sampling if needed. Any type of probability sampling technique can be applied at each stage of a multi-stage sampling and the techniques can be different at each stage. So that means we can apply any of the probability sampling technique at any stage. So maybe in the first stage we apply simple random sampling. In the second stage we can apply systematic random sampling. In the third stage we can again apply the simple random sampling etc. Also we can use different sampling techniques in different stages. We can also use the same sampling technique in different stages if we want, but does not matter. Whatever sampling technique we select, it has to be probability sampling technique. So either simple random sampling or systematic random sampling or stratified random sampling, etc. Here I have given an example where we have conducted a household survey of anemia in the district of West Bengal. So we could have selected any state here in this example, we have taken the state of West Bengal. We know in any state in our country, we have different districts. Within the district, we have different blocks and municipalities. And in the block, we have sub centers and under the sub center, there are multiple villages. And in individual villages, there are multiple households. So there are multiple stages. So as you can see, in the state of West Bengal, we can select any particular district, maybe one district, maybe two district, according to the need of the study by simple random sampling. Then from the uh, district, uh, we can select the block, one block, two block, how many block we need, whatever, by simple random sampling again. Then we can select the sub centers in the block by another probability sampling technique, say systematic random sampling in this case. From the sub-centers, we select the village by systematic random sampling and from each village, again, we can select the households by simple random sampling. So as you can see, there are multiple stages. We start with a bigger uh, population or you can say bigger sampling unit, the state itself. Then it's, it gets smaller where we are selecting the district. From the district, we are getting into further smaller units. So as we progress through different stages, the unit becomes smaller. First, we have the state, then district, block, sub-center, village, and households. Also, we have used different probability sampling techniques in different stages. 
So this is an example of multi-stage sampling. Coming to multi-phase sampling, in multi-phase sampling, the required information is collected from a large sample units and the additional information is collected from the sub-samples of the whole sample either at the same time or a later stage. So what does it mean? It means whenever you are conducting our study and for that we have selected our sample, first we gather certain information from all the people in the sample. After that, we may need some additional information which may not be available from all the people in the sample. So for that, we may have to select a part of the sample that is known as subsample and from the subsample we can gather the additional information that we need for our study. If we have one sample and from that one sample we select only one subsample then in that case it is also known as two-phase sampling or double sampling since uh, we are gathering the information in two phases first from the whole sample and second from the subsample. The sampling units in each phase is same. All the members of the sample provide basic information while some of them, that is a subsample, provide more and detailed information. So uh, as I already mentioned, the baseline information is uh, achieved by interviewing or examining the whole population. I'm, I'm sorry, the whole sample, whole sample. So all of them are either interviewed or examined etc and we gather the baseline information after that when you need the additional information we uh, look for this information from the part of the sample that is a sub sample this method is less costly and less laborious and i have given an example of multi-phase sampling that is nutritional assessment of under five children so i want to know the nutritional status of under five children Suppose my sample size is 200. So I have 200 under 5 children. And first, I measure certain indicators like weight for age, length or height for age, weight for length or height, mid upper arm circumference, head circumference, chest circumference, etc. So these anthropometric measurements are done. And uh, based on the finding, I can see that I have 170 under 5 children who have normal nutritional status. That means the rest 30 children are either undernourished or overnourished. So we can say they are malnourished. right? Now I can gather more information from this malnourished children using other methods like clinical examination, biochemical investigation, dietary history, feeding pattern, etc. So as you can see, I am gathering additional information from those children who are malnourished. I am not taking all this information from all the subjects. That is the first sample. That is the 200 under 5 children. I am only collecting this information from a subset of the sample or the subsample. So this is an example of multi-phase sampling. With this, we conclude today's session. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates, juniors and friends. We also have our Facebook page that you can follow. The link is given in the description. Take care and we shall see you in our next video.